Hi class, this is the third lesson in module nine. We will discuss the 2A ANOVA. In fact, this lesson, because we have built so much with the first two lessons of this module, this lesson seems much shorter. So this is my overview and very short lecture video together. Okay, so in the 1A ANOVA, we had data separated into groups based on one factor variable. We have two factors in the 2A ANOVA, and so group membership is decided by both factors. Maybe I should write this. We want to study the effects of group means on each of the two factors. Well, we have just one objective of this lesson, which is to perform a 2A ANOVA in R and interpret the results. Okay. In the one-way ANOVA, we had G groups corresponding to one factor variable. And one example that we saw built into our Canvas course is that the data are gene expression values for G stages of a disease. One-way ANOVA can be written this way. We have this YIJ is mu plus alpha J plus epsilon IJ. Here we have G groups. Group J has N sub J observations. Now writing it this way, this mu is the overall mean of all capital N observations. And then alpha J is the effect of the Jth group. Another way to say that is the Jth level of the factor on the group mean. And the alpha J's, oh, satisfy. This sum should go from j equals 1 to g of alpha j equals 0. The epsilon ij's are random noise distributed as a normal random variable, mean 0, and standard deviation sigma. OK, so in a two-way ANOVA, we have two factors. And as I mentioned at the start, the group membership is decided by both factors. So we can extend this model as follows. We have this overall mean. We have this noise. But then we have alpha i plus beta j plus this. We're writing this as alpha times beta sub ij. Now, the i's run through the levels of the first factor. The j's run through the levels of the second factor. And then the k, well, this ranges over all observations that are in level i for the first factor and level j for the second factor. The and is an important word here. Um, moreover, we have all of these sums. So if we add up overall i of alpha i, we get 0. Add up overall j of beta j, we get 0. And then we add up this term here, overall i and j, we get 0. Let's discuss this, this, and this a bit further. So. Alpha i and beta j are the effects of the first and second factor on the group means. They are called main effects. And then this term, which is written as alpha times beta sub ij, is called the interaction. And it reflects the effect of the combination of the first two factors, which is not explained by the sum of the factor effects. Once again, we have this epsilon i j k which is our random noise. Now, if our interest lies in the effects of the factors separately, or if there is reason to believe that the interaction is small, we can fit a linear model without that interaction term. And well, <laughs> it's exactly as I wrote before, but it lacks the interaction term. So um, in R, if we want the full ANOVA with the interaction, we put factor 1 times factor 2. If we want the ANOVA without the interaction, we put this plus here. So this is the differences in the two different R commands. It's important to understand and I'll just mention for the full two-way ANOVA, we have three null hypotheses here. First is that there 
is no difference in the means of the first factor. Second, there is no difference in the means of the second factor. And then the third null hypothesis is there is no interaction between the two factors. So in your ANOVA table, you have three different p-values. And well, that's what I mentioned here. The ANOVA table has a row and p-value for each factor. It also has a row and p-value for the interaction. Now we are in R. I'd like to do one example of a two-way ANOVA. So we can see the ANOVA table, and then we can see the three rows I mentioned and the three p-values that I just mentioned. So we will use this tooth growth data, which is built into R. If we want to look at this, we see there are three columns. The first column is tooth link. The second column is supplement type either ascorbic acid, which has VC, or orange juice, which is OJ. The third is the daily dose in milligrams. Um, so we will use two factors. First, the supplement type, we'll use both VC and OJ. And then for dose of vitamin C, I'm going to use one milligram and two milligrams. So the first thing I need to do is pull off the rows that have one milligram or two milligrams in the third column. Then our observations, the Ys are in the first column. This is the length of the teeth. One factor, the supplement comes from the second column. The second factor, the dose comes from the third column. Now, if we want to see graphically we can do a box plot. Let me move this over. Here are the four possibilities. We either have orange juice, one milligram per day, ascorbic acid, one milligram per day, orange juice, two milligrams per day, or vitamin C, two milligrams per day. So as I mentioned, at the beginning of this video, the group membership depends on both factors. That's fundamental to a two-way ANOVA. All right, so we have three null hypotheses here. The first null hypothesis is that there is no effect on group means coming from the first factor, which is our supplement factor. The second is that there is no effect on the group means coming from the second factor. That's the dose, one milligram or two milligrams. And the third null hypothesis is that there's no interaction between dose and supplement type. Okay. Now we are back here. So let's run the full ANOVA, which has the interaction term. You see, looking at this table, we have a row for the first factor, a row for the second factor, and then a row for the interaction. Well, at least at the alpha equals 0.05 level, all three of these are statistically significant. There is an effect on group means coming from the supplement type. There is an effect on group means coming from the dose. And there is an interaction between supplement type and dose. Now, if for some reason we were only interested in the main effects and not the interaction, we could run the exact same command except put a plus instead of a times. You see, now we just have this two-way ANOVA table without the interaction term. I think the final thing I'll mention in this video is this summary. So let's go back to my iPad. As I mentioned, I wanted to briefly discuss how to interpret this summary. So here I have this linear model, which does not have the interaction term. So as we were looking in the last lesson, this is our focus, this coefficients table. How can I read this? So how could I use this to get estimates for the group means in each of the four possibilities here. Well, we can see this intercept corresponds to orange juice and one milligram. 
So if we have orange juice and one milligram, I call this group one, mu sub group one, The estimate that we get, we can read, it's 21.197. Now we have three more groups, which is not too many, so I'll just show all three. So let's say the next group is vitamin C and one milligram per day. The estimate that we get here for this group mean, we take the intercept and add so this would be 21.197 minus 2.925, which is 18.272. Okay, now we have two more groups. We have group three and group four. Group three, this would be say orange juice and two milligrams. If we want the estimate of this mean, we take this plus this. So we have 21.197 plus 6.365. Twenty seven point five six two. Finally, our fourth group, which was the ascorbic acid group and two milligrams. Find the estimate for this. Okay, well, we're going to take this number minus this number plus this number. Okay, so plus 6.365, I get 24.637. Okay, so that was a nice discussion of how to read this table. Well, this is all I'm going to say about this lesson. I have an example for you built into our Canvas course. Thank you so much, everyone.